The Lord appointed seventy others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Luke 10, verses 1 to 2. Recently, a young man approached me with a question. What must he do to become a member of our church? It was not an unusual question. I have been asked it a number of times before by different persons. Yet each time I am asked it, I pause to ponder how best to answer. There is still a need for disciples to invite persons into the kingdom of God, and there are still many who are purposely seeking to know Christ and to have him in their lives. In the gospel for today, we hear of our Lord sending out a number of his followers to go on ahead of him to proclaim the coming of God's kingdom. Listening to the gospel, it is clear that the potential is abundant. The possibilities are enormous. The opportunities are plentiful. But there is an urgency in Jesus' tone as time is running out and the laborers are scarce. Whatever house you enter, Jesus said, first say, peace to this house. This peace is confidence in God's abiding presence. Today, as followers of Christ in our own generation, we too are called and sent to bear witness to Christ and to bring Christ's healing and peace to all who are in need of hearing the good news in their lives. It is really not complicated, though we often make it so. Jesus does not ask his disciples to do any sort of assessment or prejudgment whether this house will be worth their time. You do not need much to enable you to witness to his grace and love, either. Jesus said, carry no purse, no bag, no sandals. Depend, in other words, on God's help, God's grace, as you go faithfully, and you will experience strength, resilience, and the capacity to manifest the power of God, which you never knew you were capable of. Jesus also sends them out in pairs for this work. It is not to be done alone. Having partners is a blessing. So we see Paul and Barnabas, Peter and John, Barnabas and Mark, Paul and Silas, all working and journeying together to enable the mission, each strengthening the other. This is especially true as the mission is often fraught with difficulties and challenges. It is good to have at least one person we can lean on, share our thoughts and strategize with. There are few things more satisfying and life-giving, it turns out, than sharing with others giving of our abundance, receiving in our need, all the while being knit more closely together as the body of Christ. One challenge and difficulty we face is rejection. Jesus was human, so he understood that rejection and disappointment is part of life's experience, that despite our prayers and struggles, things can still go wrong. Jesus points out that our aim is to heal and not to retaliate in the face of rejection. We are to hold to our truth with confidence, but not waste too much time. Move on. There are others out there who are awaiting someone to come with a word for them, and they should not be denied because of someone else's obstinacy. There is no doubt that there is vital information here for us as we continue the work of evangelizing and proclaiming the gospel. And this is not just for clergy, but for all disciples of Christ in our day. So as a church, we are sent out before Christ and for Christ on a journey, upholding each other by praying for each other, being open-minded, being hospitable, and to return hospitality appreciatively. 
learning to rely on each other for help, encouragement, and support, and on God through prayer. It is a reminder to us that what we do is a shared ministry and that we are our own chief witnesses to Christ. As one writer puts it, it is one beggar telling another where to find food. In this case, it is to direct others where they too can receive Christ's peace. Let us pray. O God of all the nations of the earth, remember the multitudes who have been created in your image, but have not known the redeeming work of our Savior Jesus Christ. And grant that by the prayers and labors of your holy church, they may be brought to know and worship you as you have been revealed in your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we pray the Collect for Proper Nine. O God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and forever. Amen.